Join us on the fearless pursuit of self-discovery and growth. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. Hello, welcome back. You're listening to Ivy Unleashed. And today is a very special, special episode. We have a celebrity in the house. (laughs) (laughs) A celebrity in our world. We are feeling so honored and privileged to have you in front of us. We've been waiting for this moment and couldn't even believe that you were going to be here because your wisdom and insight on so many things that we want to learn more about in the self-growth and development world. We are just so excited to talk to you about everything. So welcome to Ivy Unleashed, Dr. Brenda Brumman. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I've been watching you guys and this whole setup and everything. It just feels beautiful. And being here with you feels perfect too. Yes. We first met Brenda through Nikki Lemon favorite yoga instructor who we had on and we went to her event at Buck Hill and we had been following Brenda on social media and we were so excited to get to meet her and I remember Andrew and I after we first spoke with you just looking at each other and is that is she real (laughs) we need our audience to experience you what I felt your presence this spirituality this aura around you just this light I felt like my whole healing journey was, I was like, this is, I don't want to say the missing piece, but in a way it made sense. You come from a chiropractic background, you have this evidence, the science behind it, and then your experience of spirituality. And as I'm getting into my spiritual journey, meditation has been huge for me. And that's what you talk about, specifically your Miracle Mondays that you go live on Instagram and following you has been such a gift. Mm -hmm. And so first of all, I just want to say thank you for being you. We are so happy that you're here. And I want to know how this got started. (laughs) Talk us through your journey. Oh my gosh. You know, it's funny when people say, what is your journey? It's like one of the coaches I had once said, your journey is like this accordion. So when the accordions pulled way out, it's like, okay, well, back when I was three, (laughs) and then you can like, okay, for this thing, let me just shorten it up here. But my journey has been a journey of me feeling unworthy, not good enough, less than, somehow a misfit, no matter where I've been in my life. And so the journey to me, every step of the way has really been, who am I now? And who am I here? And what am I doing? And what's my purpose? So even as a little kid, I remember growing up in a family. I was a part of a big family in South Dakota, and we lived on a farm. And my mom and dad ended up hitting a block on their farm and really ended up losing their whole family farm. And so that was my biggest point when I think back to like my journey of like, what was that very first thing that made you feel not good enough mm-hmm. or unworthy? And it was that my my family went bankrupt on their little local farm, which was a big deal to us. It was a big deal watching my mom and dad mentally and emotionally go through that. And it seemed like that was like, you know, as a little girl, you don't realize you sign these sacred contracts. And that was me of like, okay, somehow we're unworthy, not good enough. And then everything in my life after that was just some sort of projection, some sort of a mind mess that I was playing with myself to try to show over and over again somehow that I wasn't unworthy, falling into these traps, falling into these stories, falling into all this BS that isn't true. And it really was me stumbling all over myself at all those different points of going through, okay, well, you know, poverty sucks. Going through, you know, a family that deals with alcohol issues, having parents that struggled sometimes, that sucks. Being bullied in middle school and feeling not enough as a new kid in school, that was awful. And then being afraid of girls my whole life up until just a few years ago, because I thought when I was bullied by girls that somehow they just don't like me, that I'm the problem. Everywhere there in the story, I made myself the problem. And it was so sad now that I can look back, but you know, and then the journey just kept going and it kept getting deeper and deeper. And then I was like doing the pendulum swing. Well, 
I'm not feeling worthy over here, so I'm going to try to be perfect over mm-hmm. here. I'm going to become a doctor. I'm going to compete in bodybuilding and fitness. I'm going to find the perfect partner. I'm going to have the perfect life, the perfect house, car, all of that. And that journey, just every step of the way, I found either that the strive for perfection was killing me, literally. I ended up becoming addicted to painkillers at my rock bottom when I found out that my fiance had been cheating on me. Mm -hmm. And it was just every turn along the way, it was like another crumble, another story, another belief. And, you know, you always look back, you know, hindsight is 2020 and you think, oh, I just want to pick that little girl up there and tell her this. I just want to pick her up there. I want to look in the mirror at her here and, and tell her this one thing that would have changed everything for her. And now I've just made it my life's purpose to look every client of mine in the eye and be that mirror of reflection to the soul in them Mm -hmm. and say, this is the truth. And I hold that truth with more strength than I ever knew I ever had as a reflection of healing for every single person I work with, my workshops, my clients, uh, this retreat that I have coming up. I am just so certain that I'm here to reflect their truth back to them. And now I'm regaining all of my own truth within my own soul that I needed to be able to find and really love and connect and sharing all my vulnerable stories here recently that I knew I needed to claim if I'm going to be that strength to help other people claim their stories and their past. Mm -hmm. Gosh, it's beautiful. (laughs) And you know, I want to reiterate, it's not just your clients. I think it's anyone you come in contact with that's you beautifully just summed up my experience when I first first met you. And, you know, our, Andrew and I, our mission is to help people find their truth, right? And to talk about self-worth. And that's really why I believe, and I can speak for Andrea too, that the universe put you in our ba- path. Because it is, it's who are you? But I believe that it takes a certain level of really diving in to become aware of these beliefs, yeah, right? To know, okay, I, I did hold on to these beliefs that weren't serving me. In the moment, you don't realize it. So what was that point for you when you finally realized, okay, I'm holding on to some demons? You know, there's a lot of points. There's a lot of those avenues. And probably one of my hardest, worst points, but you know, they always say like your worst thing is your best thing Mm -hmm. was when I realized at my worst that I was a mom and I was addicted to drugs. And I would have to look my little girl in the eye sometimes and just know that, oh my gosh, it's not just me in this world trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. I have to do what's best for her too. And so You know, I've never really even sat and had that deep conversation with my daughter who just had her daughter Mm -hmm. this year. And that was probably one of the biggest turning points for me, I would say really, because it was like, oh my gosh, it's reality hitting you in the face that like, it it isn't just you anymore. Mm -hmm. And you need to be there for other people, which I look at all different parts of my journey and I think, thank goodness there were people there that either saw something more in me than I saw in me, or that was my daughter who was young, who kept me out of a lot of trouble at times. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's the biggest one that stands out. And I've never really thought about that until you asked me right now, because there's lots of other Mm -hmm. little moments, but it literally was that. And then I guess I would have to say the second one was when you know, I accidentally stumbled into this coaching business as a chiropractor, practicing with my patients. Um, I, as my husband and I had a terrible rock bottom and falling out in our relationship. And as I was on this journey of learning, trying to figure out what in the world does it take to make people happy? And what do we have to do in this life to feel good about ourselves and to, you know, feel like we can do something about our confidence levels and our self-esteem And it was interesting that, you know, at those times and at those moments, I was helping other people, not realizing that in the help of other people, meaning my patients, they'd come in for an adjustment and I'd be like, okay, let's get this adjustment out of the way. And then how are you feeling? Mm. You know, what's your biggest struggle right now? What stresses you out like crazy? 
And then they'd tell me things and then I would share. And then realizing in that sharing, I was sort of seeing and witnessing what I really knew in my own life. And it was like a beautiful, like they say in A Course in Miracles, it was like a holy communion, meaning it was as beneficial for them as it was for me. And then I would have patients start asking me, can I meet you like outside of the adjustment? Like, <laughs> can I just pay you for your time to just like sit and talk? And you know, you're always the last to know. So you know, I'm like, <laughs> sure, let's try that. And so then realizing that that was the purpose that was being put in front of me and realizing then when I would go through my dips and go through my days where I just felt like, oh, I feel like I'm back to where I started again. I'm feeling awful today. I'm feeling unworthy and why I'm doing all these great things. And then they were my mirror reflection. I knew I needed to be there for other people, which was beautiful because it helped me at the same time. I even notice it right now in my coaching where I'll have a day maybe where I just wake up and I feel off. You know, you feel mm -hmm. stuck. You feel just like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this today? Like I, I can't even put two thoughts together. I'm just feeling so unworthy and, and not good enough. And then I sort of get into this like energetic flow and I know my my coaching client calls are coming up. And then when I sit in that chair, it's like there is this divine connection that drops in and the things that come out of my mouth and the energy and the strength that I hold, because again, I'm just so certain that I need to be strong for them. I need to hold that strength and that divine connection to something bigger than the both of us. And then here it comes in for me. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Yeah. It's hard to even put that in words sometimes too of what that is. You know, sometimes I listen back to one of our episodes and I'm like, was that even me talking? Yes. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> yes. And I'm talking so fast, but it's like when you're connected to your life's purpose and like you said, you're helping people that combination. Mm -hmm. What is it that Jay Shetty calls it? The Dharma? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like your purpose and service, like putting them together. It's pure magic. And so what I just keep thinking about is so interesting is that you do a lot of work with women, mm -hmm. which is interesting because you were bullied by them and you were afraid of them. And so I'm curious about that journey of becoming more comfortable with women and empowering them and getting over that fear of interacting with them like how that came about for you? I think there was just some sort of a unique turning point for me. Like, for instance, I'll say about five years ago when, you know, I had been coaching clients on the side for several years as a chiropractor. And then it just had hit me one day that I thought, you know, I'm having more fun coaching them than adjusting them. Like the adjustments are powerful. I love them. I get adjusted regularly but I knew I could have a huge impact on their mental emotional state, which would then therefore help their physical state mm -hmm. and well being. And so I sort of went on a journey then of like, okay, this is what I'm meant to do. This is my purpose. This is where I need to be in my life. Yeah. So that fear of women that I felt, or girls, I would say, because at the time I was bullied, I was in seventh grade and it was just, I was a new kid at school, which was always really frightening. My parents had to move to get better jobs with me going into seventh grade. So it was middle school at a bigger town in South Dakota. And yeah, I just had never felt that feeling from other girls before. I came from a school of 16 kids in my class and we were all really close and just loved each other. It sounds weird. Like I feel like I'm from the 1800s. <laughs> But it just, you know, again, that sacred contract, we don't realize we're signing. And then I thought for me, little Brenda, it was like somehow I'm not worthy of these female friendships. It actually encouraged me to find a boyfriend early. So I like literally started dating in eighth grade and that's my junior high school sweetheart who I ended up marrying wow. and having Mackenzie with whole other story. Mm -hmm. But it was interesting as my journey progressed and all of my just mental, emotional turmoil that I was carrying around with me. And then when the progression happened, when I started coaching my chiropractic patients, it was along that journey where I felt like, okay, this is about more than just myself. Mm -hmm. And this is about the people that are meant to find me that I'm meant to serve. And one of my coaches always said this, and I loved it. She said, we have soul contracts here with people. And when your clients find you, 
it's because on another level, you had that soul contract with them and it was just a matter of time. And so the days where I feel like I'm struggling the most and I can't quite put myself first, I think of them. And I think, you know, if everything is energy and for every good choice that I make in my life, it will affect someone who knows halfway around the world in Africa, then I'm going to take that next best step for me because it isn't just about me. And I'm here to connect with everyone who I'm meant to serve and help because I know what that felt like. I know what it felt like to struggle, to feel not good enough, to always comparing yourself to everyone else, to feeling like something's wrong with you. And it's so, it, it, like, it makes my blood boil thinking about it, but it's the thing that gets me out of bed. And my method of serving in this world is to help women get out of that. Because mm-hmm. every moment, every second, every minute of every day, there's someone stuck in their mind trying to figure out what's next. What do I do? Yeah, it sounds like you you recognize your struggles from when you were younger in other women and help kind of get them through that. Like you, we've talked before about you being a mirror for people and how you probably can see when someone's struggling with their self-worth or the value and just showing them, you know, you are worth so much more than this. Let me help you see that. And that in return is helping you with your self-worth. Exactly. It's that perfect Holy communion again. Mm -hmm. It's, it's that circle like, you know, not even just a circle of life. It's like a circle of love. Mm -hmm. It's like a circle of self-acceptance, a circle of mirroring and reflecting the truth in each other. Yeah. I'm curious what other practices outside of this, right, for someone who isn't a coach or isn't in a helping, serving position with their career, what did that deep work outside of that look like for you to regain that self-worth? Yeah. So for me, yeah, coaching was actually really, when I look at it, kind of a smaller part of it compared to all the work that I did. You know, I think all the way back to my probably first experience with personal development was way back in undergrad, I would say, you know, looking at these success coaches in the world and, you know, Tony Robbins Mm -hmm. and what are they doing? And they're, you know, helping people succeed at another level. And I was like, wow, yes, go. And success was always something I wanted because I thought that would prove to myself in the world that Mm -hmm. through success, it would be me proving I'm worthy and good enough. And so it really started with just general, I would say, personal development and listening to everybody I could get my hands on, Mm -hmm. reading books from people who were brave enough to tell their story, brave enough to say, this is part of my journey here. And then, you know, workshops, I would attend seminars. And I always felt what was really interesting through that journey was that whatever I was meant to hear, like so many of us Mm -hmm. gets presented at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, again, probably those soul contracts. It's like, oh, now this is my next teacher. What what do they have? What's their angle? What's their way of kind of getting me passed through these things? And so, yeah, going to retreats, then the coaches. And it was, you know, I think about right now, my daughter Brianna is nine. Um, I stayed home with my four younger kids for a while when I had literally you know, the four kids that were five and under and three of them were in diapers. There was a time I stepped back as a chiropractor and was like, okay, I just like this. I need to be with my children for a while. And then to be honest, it was a few years into that when I was like, whoa, this is hard. Mm -hmm. I don't talk to humans (laughs) or not humans, um, adults, you know, kids (laughs) you can only talk to so much. And then It was interesting because then there was a a chiropractic clinic that came up for sale in Stillwater from a doctor who had retired. And that was my first out, like back into work again. I think Brianna was about three and a half years old and I just worked two and a half days a week. Um, And it was, you know, sort of into that process where I realized, okay, yep, here I am getting out of my own head again. I had to like all these parts of our journey where we dip back and we come back out again and we dip back. And so I joined a coaching program where we got to travel to four different, mostly international destinations a year. And I joined that for two years in a row. And it was almost like my coming out party of, you know, hair up in a bun, couldn't remember if I brushed my teeth that day (laughs) and, and, you know, getting back into practice a little bit, but then joining this program and Talk about women. Women came back into my life again. 
you know, that I was normally afraid of them. I kept my social circle small because I didn't want that feeling of like, what if they don't like me? Mm -hmm. And then I was like burst onto the scene of like these beautiful women that are coaches. And so they were coaching you. They were a coaching academy and it was a good mix of like spirituality, mindset, business, all of that, which I loved every Mm -hmm. single aspect of it. So here I was having to confront a lot of my fears you know, stepping into sort of a new business by saying, okay, I'm ready to start coaching more as a career, Mm -hmm. not just on the side. And then I'm confronting being around a bunch of other fabulous women. What's that going to be like Mm -hmm. for my confidence and self-esteem? And then really just exploring the world. I had never traveled outside of the U.S. by myself on an you know, international flight. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, wow, here I am trying to figure this all out. But I was just so determined to grow and to learn. And to me, growing is like breathing. Mm. I just love to grow and learn and expand and help and all of those things. So it was so nerve wracking and it was so scary, but that was a huge part of what made me think, okay, Brenda needs to get out of her own way Mm -hmm. because The more I'm stuck in my own way, the more I'm not going to be able to step into all of what I'm meant to do here. And it's like, we never know what in the heck are we meant to do here? What's our purpose? Like you had said, okay, for people who aren't coaches, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter what your career is, what your path is, who you are. You have a divine purpose here. And whatever that is, it's only something that you can do, that you were brought here to do at this specific time for you to do it in only the way that you can do it and give it to the world. And that exact thing will light your soul on fire. Thank you for saying (laughs) that, because that is the permission every especially women need to hear, right? Like your mother of five that's saying, I'm going to go do this big thing for me. And Mm. I deserve it. And I'm going to hop on a plane. I've never done this before. (laughs) You know, what was that like in your family unit? And what were those feelings when you're booking that flight and you're saying, I'm going to invest in myself? Yeah, that was really scary. My husband and I, you know, it was like, okay, Dennis, I want to do this. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if now's the right time. Because really at the time, you know, I was only working really part-time. He had the weight of all of our finances on his shoulders. So I used credit cards at first. And that was a big thing for me to say, oh, I'm putting some financial expenditure on my family here as a result of me being a mom of five saying, I want to grow though. And that was one big, huge step in it. And then I had children at home that I had to say, okay, I'm going to go for a week here, seven days or sometimes 10 days. And Dennis had to take the reins. So it was a big part of what he had to do. And then, yeah, my kids, some of them understood, you know, the older ones, but the younger ones were just like, oh, mommy's going. Why is she leaving us? But I would always say, you know, mom needs to do what she can to make herself happy so I can be a better mom for you guys. And I'm, I'm, this is work for me too. This is part of what I want to do to help other people and make money for our family. But it was a big stretch. I even had family members look at me like, really, Brenda? Oh, you're going to Paris? Like, wow, that's kind of selfish, isn't it? And for me, it, I just knew I just had to keep sort of that tunnel vision. And, you know, my mom and dad were even sometimes like, uh, what, where are you going now? Like, is this needed? You know, do you really have to? And I was like, yep, no, nope, this is part of what I'm committed to doing and I need to do it. And so, yeah, I got kind of the frown sometimes. And then other times, you know, I had what I felt like friends that were encouraging. And I made some of my closest girl best friends as part of this coaching community of women who were willing to, I love this, that one of my mentors once said, she said, make your children the reason, not the excuse. Mm. And I was like, yes. I felt like, and as a mom, everything you do to grow and improve, you're ultimately doing for your children. Because one of my other favorite sayings is that your children don't learn how to treat themselves by watching how you treat them they learn how to treat themselves by watching how you treat you. Mm-hmm. Ugh, and that was like, wow, okay. So if they see me running ragged, if they see me not putting myself first, if they see me not taking care of myself, then that's a reflection for them. And 
it's a it hits home. Yeah, I bet your kids have watched this and have learned so much from you. And exactly what you're saying, like through the years of their life, they're going to remember that and they're going to think about that. And like you said, they'll know how to prioritize themselves and treat themselves. But I also think about, you know, friendships and the opinions of others as you're doing this, because that stops a lot of moms from prioritizing themselves or doing anything to up-level their life. And something that I've even learned from us launching not even a year ago are your real friendships, your true friendships where you you feel the support and the love, they stay, yeah. you know? And the ones that have the opinions or don't engage or don't ask you about what you're doing that is lighting you on fire, you're mm-hmm. like, okay, now I see. I see where my real true friendships are because they're so excited for me pursuing my dream that they can't help but talk about it with me or ask me about it. And so I'm curious as you've developed in your career, what that has looked like with friendships of you continually chasing these dreams. And it may seem wild to them, but like you continually pursuing that, how has that been? You know, it's interesting because the girls that I developed the closest friendships with really in these last few years were these other women who were doing the same sort of thing, all in their different niches, Mm -hmm. interior design, you know, personal development in one way, shape or form, helping moms, whatever it may be. They were my close knit family and some were like literally all around the world, but we knew each other. We, we got each other, Mm -hmm. you know, it was like, okay, you're on this journey. You're really working hard on yourself. You're trying to make this work, make yourself a priority. And so there was such a beautiful level of understanding. And again, those people, so that was like, you know, four or five years ago, they're still some of my best girlfriends. And so, and anyone else here, I would say, would be, again, I had the same experience where some, you know, really aligned with me and have been a beautiful support and other ones just not so much. So I'm thinking of people, myself included, who are like, yeah, easier said than done, right? Like drown out all this negativity, tunnel vision, what do you feel like really helped you at the end of the day stick to your truth and know that you were helping your kids out, that this was the right move? How did you really listen to that intuition? You know, it's funny that it felt like it was driving me mm-hmm. instead of me driving it. I just couldn't help it. And I know that sounds weird. It's like, wait, no, it I want the three-step plan. <laughs> but it was just the thing inside me. It was a fire. It was a drive. It was just a unique feeling mm-hmm. that I knew there was something more to come out of it. I didn't understand. I didn't know every step of the way. You know, I'm, I and still am not that person with like this crystal clear five-year plan. I'm more like, especially now as I've deepened really into my spirituality, it's like, you show me, Mm. you show me, I don't know. And I love that humility. I love that feeling of really, okay, great. There's this divine loving intelligence that's way smarter than I am. And that is on my side and can support me. And so really that's been a huge part of it. I would say where it was a driving force pushing me. And then I would say my husband, because he's been right here with me on this journey and he coaches men and women and he speaks just like I do. He spoke before I even had the courage to stand next to him and then the courage to speak on my own. And so it, it was so nice for me when I, you know, you go out in the world and you try to like, okay, I'm like doing this thing and here I am and I'm trying to make it work. And then, you know, you get knocked down or the voices come in and who do you think you are? What, what makes you think you're good enough to do this and all of those things? And then for me, I'm so grateful that I got to go home to someone who would say, just you showed up. Mm. That That's enough. Maybe you didn't say it perfect. Maybe you didn't. No one in the room signed up to work with you. You know, no one is going to take your next workshop, but you showed up. That's all that the universe asks you to do is you do your part and then let it do the rest. Show up. Oh, I just got chills off <laughs> that so much. <laughs> I feel like by you listening and allowing the universe right to guide you, to lead you, and then your 
listening to that, you're also keeping these promises that you're making to yourself by showing up, which in return helps with your confidence. Yes. And that is really your tagline with your business is to help women create soul confidence, true self-worth. How, what does that look like when you work with these women to help them build their confidence and their self-worth? What does that really look like? Oh, it's such a beautiful (laughs) process. And it's what I didn't realize is like, I've been going through that journey, Mm -hmm. living it myself, like experiencing it, failing, falling, getting up again, feeling like there's a force behind me. All of it is just culminating into, as I sit down with that person across the, the usually computer screen from me. And it's so fascinating because like, I'll just give you an example of a coaching call I had just this last week. So this woman, I mean, everybody comes with their own certain unique goal that they want to accomplish, but it's really all about, oh my gosh, I want to feel good about who I am. Mm -hmm. I want to be confident. I want to feel like I'm here for a purpose. Like I can show up for life in a way that is powerful. And so as we go through this journey, you know, you, you know, as coaching people, you look for what's holding them back. What's the story? What's the beliefs? Mm -hmm. What's the underlying root cause of this negativity of this old story that's holding them back. And this woman showed up to this coaching call and, you know, I was feeling into the energy. That's one thing I've realized. I've developed this really cool sense of energy. I can just feel Mm -hmm. when someone is telling me a story or whether there's, that's like the core, that's the truth. And I'm like, no, we got to keep going. We got to get deeper. There's something else in there. So the conversation started with her saying, I don't know what to do with my mother-in-law. She drives me crazy. She's so mean. She's passive aggressive. She says these things. I don't know how to react. And my sister-in-law is very much the same way. I mean, they just, I don't feel accepted. I don't feel good enough. I don't feel worthy in this relationship with my husband. And we went all the way from that conversation, like that's literally where it started, to helping her see the mechanics of how the mind works and how that negative voice in the ego is controlling them and how it shows up then in her life and then how they are a mere reflection of what's happening in her and that what's true and divine in her is like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, meaning everything that she wants and craves is already within her. And we're going on this huge circle journey and at the end of it, she starts to see the reflection of what the in-laws are representing for her and how that brings her back to her truth. And by the end, she is like dying laughing in her (laughs) chair that she ever let that bother her, that she saw what was real and true in there for her, and that she's ready to step into her own power. And that really, that's what enlightenment is, Mm. is not something we strive for, not something like I talk a lot about that with self-worth. It's not anything you can earn in this world. You don't earn your worthiness. There isn't a degree. There isn't a certain car, a certain boyfriend or husband or number of children or bank account number or certain weight on the scale that is going to be ding, 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 ding. You are worthy. You hit the jackpot. It's an internal job. And so for her, when she had this, just like these moments of realization where that mental fog just finally cleared of what was not true for her, she just felt what it felt like to step into her own worth and feel enlightened, to feel like she was worthy. And it wasn't anything she had to go out and do. She found it within her own self. So beautiful. That's so cool that you got her through that exercise. You know, it's so important. We both are working with a coach that she walks us through these things to find that basically it all comes back to you have everything within you already. Mm -hmm. You don't need to troubleshoot what your in-laws are going to say to you or your boss is going to do at work. Like you have everything within you at all times. And it comes back to something that you're great at, which is being present and meditating. I've noticed that the more I tune into the present moment, knowing I have everything I need within me, Mm -hmm. I don't need to troubleshoot these things. I don't need to think too far in advance. I don't need to go so far in the past. So um, as you led us in a meditation, I know that this is something that you do regularly. Yeah. And I'm curious how that plays into 
your spirituality, your self-worth, how you coach people, just like what meditation has done for you? Yeah. Meditation has really helped me see and feel and know in every cell of my being that the more I get who I think Brenda needs to be out of the way, that my soul, Brenda, can come through. Because everything in this world, I feel like, is so taught upside down. Meaning, I, I, I am what I have, I am what I do, I am what other people think of me, I'm separate from what I want, I'm separate from everybody else, and I'm separate from source, God, divine. And so we're all seeking, searching, striving, all of it, even when I would come out of a meditation and the phone rings. Ugh, what do I have to do here? What problem do I have to solve? And so much of that has so little to do with who you are than what you bring to everything or who you bring to every interaction in your life. And so for me to sit down in meditation, close my eyes, tune the world out and tune into something way more intelligent and loving and kind and beautiful and true than what I think in my mind Brenda needs to be, I just tap in. I tune in and I let it lead me. And it feels so, it, it sounds so Pollyanna-ish, you know, because it's really you have to do it for yourself. But I am clear that Brenda doesn't know everything that she needs to know to do whatever she thinks she needs to do. I am clear on that. But I know there is a source and a power beyond me that knows, that's breathing us right now, that's beating our heart right now, that is filling our heart with joy and excitement when we see beautiful things. And I want more of that. So I tune in tune the rest of the world out, become, as Dr. Joe says, no body, no one, nowhere, no time, and feel that feeling that I am just at one with everything. Now let her take the phone call. She can do it much better. <laughs> <laughs> let her respond to the email or coach the client or handle a kid that wants to play video games on hour three. You know, <laughs> she, she knows better than this stuck in my head, Brenda. You know, Andrea and I are both new to meditation. I found it so helpful in helping with my anxiety and my confidence, that ability to just be in what Andrea said, like you have everything you need within you. And I've, you know, just different meditations I've done, different vis visualizations of super powerful stuff. And I know that you've gone to just deep into this meditation, you've experienced things that I want to get to that level. And so I'm curious what some of those experiences have been for you when you are in a deep meditation, when you are, you do hear this intuition. Yeah. What is that like? Oh, divine. <laughs> As I like to say, drunk, you're drunk on the divine. You just feel and know you vibrate in a way that is beyond this world. And you just know it because you come back to this like 3D reality and it's, we're fooled by our senses, you know, mm -hmm. what you think you see, what you think you hear, what you think you touch. And there, and science has proven this. There's so much more beyond that. And so I want to tap into it and I want to bring that into this world. So when I'm in that space, oh, I've had all kinds of things, beautiful things come through. Like even just recently, a few weeks ago in that space, and I can always tell there's just a feeling when I get a download in that space of whether it's Brenda or whether it's something bigger, just a knowingness. Mm. And in that space a few weeks ago, I had this boom. It was just felt like boom, school of self-worth for women. SOS. When women in this world say, I need help on a deeper level, they can find a school to go to, to come back home to their soul. And it was like, yes, I'm like, oh, so exciting. And then I keep my phone by me because then sometimes I take notes. So mm -hmm. I'm like, school of self-worth, SOS. And then I can just like, okay, oh, what is that again? <laughs> and it is just, it feels so true. It feels right. When you get downloads in that space, it feels like, of course, 
look at our school now. Like I was sitting at my kid's school today to pick up my three youngest and I'm looking at these little kids running around playing and I'm thinking, okay, there should be like math, science, Mm self-worth, recess, gym, because I was looking at these little kids and I thought, I wonder what they know to be true about themselves. Yeah. What's imprinted on them already. Yes. Or if you ask them, like this is in my women in business workshops, I always ask people, who are you at your soul level? Not the roles, not the wife, the mom, the daughter, the business owner, the whatever. Who are you? And I always want to know like what kids would say. Mm -hmm. Like if you lined up kids, one of the um, workshop attendees uh, texted me that night after she went home and she said, I asked all my kids and their answers were so beautiful. (laughs) So like there goes to prove, you know, as you grow up and you think you got to check the boxes and do all the right things, you know, that we might lose ourselves in that process. But in that meditation, it just is a space of potential. Mm -hmm. It's a space of I don't need to be anyone. I don't need to play the roles like, okay, thank God in this space. I don't need anyone. Mm-hmm. I don't need money. I don't need food. I don't need water. I don't need attention. I don't need someone to prove I'm good enough. I don't need anything from anyone. And no one needs me. So then what's left? <laughs> I want to know what's left. Yeah. Yeah. That's powerful. I cannot even imagine what happens after a workshop with you. I can't wait to go to one. <laughs> how long did it take you to get to this space? Like how long have you been meditating for? Yeah, I've been meditating for, uh, let's see. So Braden is 14. I started meditating when I was pregnant with him okay. and it was legit. I get the, you know, sit there for two minutes and my husband was leaning into meditation at the time. And like, I'd have my eyes closed, like with soft music playing. And then I'd like open an eye and I'm like, is he looking at me? Like with my eyes closed, is this weird? What do I do? Do I cross my legs? Do I sit up? Oh, do I make a sound? Like, what do I do? And then, you know, you're just fighting. The mind is just, and you're like, oh, oh, this is awful. Oh, oh my gosh. So it takes practice. I mean, I'm not going to lie about that. Music always helped me when I started. I just felt like I could you know, settle into that space and just feel the notes and just relax into it. And I use the Calm app a lot, the Mm -hmm. free Calm app and the sounds. I would just kind of like go and float and let those take me. But it was years and years and years. And it wasn't, it isn't until I would say, or hasn't been until the last probably two years, there was a moment in bed one night. You know, those moments where you have like your you're getting ready to go to bed at night and you've had like a rough day or a rough week or a rough month or year or whatever. (laughs) And you're just like, I can't do this anymore. I don't, what, what am I supposed to be doing? What is it? What, what, what's my life supposed to be about? And I had a moment in bed where I felt like I really surrendered. Mm -hmm. Surrendering is when you really like, you'll know when you surrender, it's like, literally you're just, Oh, what? And you're, open. And I had this really wild moment where it was like, I don't know if you'd say a voice came in or if it was my own like gut inner voice saying, okay, Brenda, you can keep doing what you're doing in this world, the way that you're doing it. And you will learn, but it will be through pain. Or you can turn things over and go deeper but your life will never, ever be the same again. And it's your choice. And I came out of that like, I'm tired of the pain. I'm tired of discomfort and feeling all of the stress and the striving and struggling. And so I'm like, I'm game. I was scared. It was like I walked to the edge of this cliff and was going to have to jump, and I didn't know if I was going to make it on the other side. But it was literally that moment when I'm like, I'm not turning around this time, not this time. And it was like, I just just kept leaning in deeper and deeper and deeper, and that's where I was able to really take those meditations at a deeper level. And then at my best, you know, I could sit for four-plus hours, and (sighs) it would feel like 20 minutes had gone by. 
Wow. <sighs> Four plus hours? Yes. Yeah, so the deepest part of my meditations, I want to say Dr. Joe Dispenza really introduced me to a lot mm -hmm. of those guided meditations because his was a way of really leaning in. Here's the difference. I just realized too, as I'm saying this out loud, is that you have to trust. Mm -hmm. You have to trust because there's moments again, where isn't it true that we get to that point, those points in our lives where we come to the edge of a cliff and we know we got to do something different than we've been doing, you know, but that something different is scary. It's the unknown, yeah. but in the unknown, is when all the, where all the magic happens. It's where the pure potentials come. And now I've been able to lean in that, into that enough. Like one of my reoccurring nightmares is like, I'm going up this like steep, it's either a roller coaster or a hill or something. And I'm getting to the top and I like, I hate losing my stomach and then I'll just boom, lose my stomach. And in my dream, I'm just like, Oh my gosh. And now I don't have those hardly at all anymore because in my meditations, when I come to edges of things, I leap. I jump. Like you picture yourself while you're meditating? It just happens. Uh, like it's just like, okay, you get into the space, you relax, you ease into it. You just keep allowing whatever's meant to come without any resistance, without any way of holding yourself back. And you just settle into it. Settle in, settle in. Again, you're overcoming yourself the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden these images come. These experiences come and it's like, I, I, you know, like the Nesty plunge. I don't know if you probably don't remember, but do you remember there was old commercials like Nesty where people would come up to the edge of like a swimming pool or like these oh, lakes yes. and they would like open their arms and just take a dive backwards into this water. I do that in my dreams and I like, or in my meditations and I'll fly, I'll fly. I even had this crazy meditation once where like where I live in Stillwater Bayport area, there's a couple federal maximum security prisons, like literally within two miles, two different directions of our house. And one of the times the meditation, as I got deep into it and I felt like, you know, there's no like limits, there's no body limits, there's no any limits in that space. And I would be flying and one of the, one of the visions, I guess you would call it in my meditation, I like found myself like flying through the air into this prison. I've never been inside there, but I went like my body went into the soul of each person, like cell after cell, after cell, after cell. And I was just forgiving and loving, forgiving and loving, forgiving and loving. And at the end of it, I just felt like a whole person. It was incredible. And I was just like, wow. You know, it's just, it, again, it's like bending space and time in this 3D world where we think, okay, this is the desk and this is the wall and this is everything else. There is so much more beyond that if we just allow ourselves to be open to it and trust and let it take you. You don't have to do it. It's like self-worth. When you lean into true self-worth, you don't have to do anything. It's so beautiful. It's so simple. It's so powerful. And that's why it's beyond anything here in this world. Yeah. I keep thinking about just different levels of consciousness, right? Like what you're saying could be so far over. I mean, it's over my head because I've never had anything <laughs> like that. I've never had an experience. I'm still at the point of meditation where I'm like, I need to be in the basement with the door shut. So in case a kid comes in, it doesn't look weird. Like I'm there. <laughs> that's where I am. I'm not flying anywhere. My, like, my deepest meditation at this point is... I'm climbing down a ladder away yeah. from my thinking brain, away from all these thoughts. I'm climbing down and it's getting darker and darker and more clear. That's like mm -hmm. as deep as I've gotten. Yeah. So I'm thinking about you walking this earth, interacting with people you're coaching, people that are your friends, your children, random people that you know, how you at this level of consciousness are able to have relationships with people that are completely walking around unconscious, unaware of these thoughts of self-worth or even trying to meditate or, you know, how do you interact with people? Yeah. It's on a deeper level. That's what's really cool. It's cool that you even say that because mm -hmm. it's not something I go around and even talk about, but 
it's funny, my kids will comment on things that happen, like weird synchronicities or people that will be, you know, we're in Target and somebody just has to come tell me a certain thing. And I swear that's because of this deeper level of something that is way beyond Brenda. And that I just feel like as I deepen into it, it I carry it more into this world. And people will say, I don't know. Well, I'd get it from clients, but general people will say, I don't know why I just felt like I could share that with you. And it just all came out. <laughs> but I would say so much that. And I, I feel, and this is so much from A Course in Miracles too. Like, as you know, listening to my Miracle Monday, A Course in Miracles is a book that I came across after some huge spiritual awakenings. My husband had his, I've had my own. And in that book, it just burns right through to the truth of who we are. Every problem you have, you can bring to that book, but it's deep. It took me years to start even understanding it. And, you know, as a student, I'm going to be a student my whole life because the depth never ends. But I would say that when you know, like you know, like you know, there is a deeper love, there is a deeper connection within all of us on a deep level, I feel like my job is to see the soul within each person way beyond anything that our little bodies or little minds will like fight over, (laughs) argue. And I fall into it. I, I judge. I'll, oh, oh my gosh. Wow. That person threw me off, you know, but I still go back to that. I still go back to they're a soul in there. And my job is to see the light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not not beyond like some weird Pollyanna-ish way of saying it, but like legit. Yeah. See their highest self is what I'm hearing. Yeah. I'm reading a book called The Radical Awakening and Dr. Shafali, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but she talks about how there's different levels of consciousness and you notice it, especially if you're more like enlightened, like you are walking around and it's almost like you can see, oh, they're kind of like a toddler in this, right? They have the tantrums and if things don't go their way. They're mad and they're stomping around or whatever, even as a grown adult. And so it's almost like you can have more compassion mm-hmm, for it, yeah. right? Like, oh, they just haven't started this work on themselves or they haven't dove into their self-worth or they haven't dove into wondering, you know, how they're designed and what unique gifts they have or to be able to see that in other people. And so it's almost like, the more you think about consciousness and how we're all at different levels, you can have more compassion for people. Yeah. Or like when I'm when we're by you, we can feel it. We can feel that you're more conscious because we feel seen. Like when you look yeah. at me, you are staring at me and I feel like <laughs> I feel like you know exactly who I am and I could tell you anything. And so yeah. I think there's something about consciousness and yes. meditation and how this is all connected and it just helps with your interactions with anyone. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And I also want to just, you know, like even you say me as enlightened and I don't even know really what that would fully be or mean, you know, so I don't want to come across as anything like I've figured it all out because again, that's where Brenda gets in trouble. (laughs) She thinks she knows. So this is more like just allowing that whatever it is to come through me. And Mm -hmm. it's just something bigger and greater than me. But for sure, I would say, I think, you know, it's, it's a process of really leaning into that and really understanding that we have a guide. We have a guide here. Thank you. You know, thank you. Because I, I don't know. And my humanness, like this is a big thing in this wake up your self-worth challenge that I really want women to understand is we have a humanness to us. Take me on any given day, like any given Sunday, you know, the Sunday scaries and you're just like, gosh, am I doing enough? What do I got to do this week? The kids, I haven't been paying enough attention to my kids. Am I a good enough mom? Like what? I have all the humanness. Of course we all do. I don't ever want to think that I've like figured this all out sort of thing. Um, But our humanness is divine. It is divine and it's part of the process the, the divine humanness of who we are, but then brought in and fueled by the beingness that is something beyond all of us, then it's helped me even in these last few weeks as I know I want to call in this beautiful tribe of women ready to feel that for themselves, is that we need to own our humanness and allow it to be part of the process. It's the beauty. It's the, the path. 
the realization. It's the contrast that we all need here to see and know and feel who we are. So, and I know one of the things I know too, and this is definitely from A Course in Miracles is, you know, my husband just said this quote today when I told him I was coming here and I'm like, oh, I have to, I have to think of a quote. <laughs> so do I use someone else's or <laughs> is it mine? And uh, he said, you know, my favorite that he came up with, he said, imagine a world where everyone knows they are the other. So when you say, how do I react or when I look at someone else or walking through Target or watching someone have like a breakdown, that's me having a breakdown. And so I know by mirror reflection, which is true healing here, is that if I can show them, meaning if it's just by a smile, if it's just by presence, if it's just by sending a little blessing as I'm walking by, that if I can show them that, that's what I will feel within my own soul. Or if I want to judge, criticize, condemn, complain, then that's what I know to be true within me. And it's like, I'm, I'm tired of playing that game. It gets me nowhere fast. I don't, not perfect. I slip, I trip, I fall. But I just, I know that's not part of who I am and who I want to be. I love that. And I'm also thinking, you know, as I do this work and I'm just starting and it's this meditation space, this trust, right? The surrendering with my health. That's something I've done is like, I can't carry this weight. Mm -hmm. And then it's the other side of it, right? That trust. And so when you say that there is this guide, there is this knowing to trust, what does that look like? Does it look like just tuning into that intuition, quieting that outside noise and taking over what you feel called to do? Well, how does that what is that surrendering and trusting? What does that trusting mean? Yeah. Trusting that there's something beyond me. And really what's brought me to that, again, I'll say A Course in Miracles, but knowing, I know, again, I don't know. You know mm-hmm. I, I didn't make me. I have no idea what to do to make me. I have no idea how to make my children, really. You know, like legit, the where did you come from? It's just there's got to be something more. I didn't make me. And so what is that? And to me, a miracle, right? Like it's my favorite word. It's on my necklace. (laughs) A miracle is a shift in your perception. When you change the way you look at things, what you look at changes and who's looking. Is it little you Or is it a divine, loving, beautiful intelligence beyond you? And I know when little me looks, I don't know what in the hell I'm doing. (laughs) (laughs) And I've just probably, like, I have failed at every single thing in my life. I have failed at being a mom so many times. I've failed at being a good daughter. I've failed at being a doctor. I've let patients down. I've been through my own addictions. I've been through financial bankruptcies, foreclosures. I've lost friends. I've disconnected myself from so many, you know, great people in my life because of my own internal struggles. I've went through a divorce with my junior high school sweetheart. I've lost a baby. I've like, I've just realized in all of that, there's got to be something more than just my little brain trying to figure this all out. So surrendering, and this is so true too, because so many people think it's giving up. No, it's giving in to something bigger. Mm -hmm. Because it's ignorant for me to think that I know it all or that I've got it all figured out. And I'm so grateful it's not on my shoulders. That's heavy. Like even the day-to-day of like running our households or kids or you know, should we do this? Shouldn't we do that? I mean, every decision in this world feels so heavy. Like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to screw it up. So I won't decide, okay, I'll stay stuck in indecision and not do anything. Okay. I decide. And then that doesn't work out like this. That's just so heavy on us. So if I can just know that there is that intelligence and trust in it, but give into it and give over 
to something and I've witnessed it in my life. I've witnessed Dennis and I weren't meant to be together by this world standards. You know, I didn't know that I could have five children. You know, I didn't know I could overcome these things. I didn't know I could quit an addiction by the snap of a finger. I didn't know. Like so many miracles have happened that I just know deep down that there's something more and that something more loves you so much and is here for you. But what it does take is your willingness because you have free will. You don't have to listen. You don't have to give in. You don't have to surrender to it. You can do it your way. And every time I've done it my way, I've screwed up over and over and over again. And that's okay. That's my divine humanness, right? So I've learned from every single one. But thank God it's not up to me. Ugh. See, it's so I, I get so curious about this because I read a lot of books about spirituality and they say universe or guide. And you just said, thank God. And so what do you call it? Do you call it God? I call it so many different names mm -hmm. because all of the women that I interact with, you know, I have these women in business workshops, so I don't know what their word is. Mm -hmm. And the word is so triggering for so many people. You know, I was born and raised Catholic and have felt so much judgment and even projected my own judgment. And so I didn't have a good feeling when someone would say God, um, universe. I was like, whatever that is, you know, <laughs> nature, you know, source. Okay. So I, a lot of times, even with my husband, like today we were talking and I said, you know, when I really listen deep, you know, God, source, Christ, you know, mm -hmm. like all these words just come yeah. out yeah. because I'm so used to whoever I'm communicating with. Like I want to use their language. I don't know what it is, but it's all the same to me. Yeah. It's like this presence. Love. Yeah. Yeah. Love. That we could be loved that much. Oh my gosh. You mm -hmm. know? Wow. Yeah. And, you know, I keep thinking, oh, I want to get to that point. I want to get to that point. And this has been a lot of years in the making for you to yeah. get here. So thinking of people who this all sounds so good, but it sounds overwhelming. What is a good place to start? How do you recommend someone start this, this journey, this spiritual awakening? Yeah. I feel like if you can really tune in, it's already working in your life right now. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to the songs you're hearing. Pay attention to the movies that are being played around you. Pay attention to what people are saying. Like literally the message is written on the walls right now. If you can just be open enough to listen. It's wild how you get in your car and here comes this song and you're like, oh, yes, I need that right now. <laughs> yes, that's for me. So I would say it's already happening yeah. because you are already happening and awakening the whole planet is awakening right now. It's just, we're all at, you know, different stages. And it's not that one stage is better than another. It's like saying fifth grade's better than first grade or 10th grade's better than kindergarten. No, they're all important. They're all just the journey. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, just pay attention to what's happening now. And for me, music, just sitting down with some nice music was my first start. And then just relaxing, breathing, focusing on my breath. One of the things I heard that I love too is someone said, you know, you get in that state, you close your eyes, you relax, just try to be present there. And you say the question, I wonder what my next thought will be. And you wait. There's something really magical about that, that makes you for a moment even get quiet. <laughs> You know, I love that. That came actually from Dr. Wayne Dyer. And so that's important. I have a free seven minute meditation. It's meditatewithbrenda.com and let it take you, let it relax. Just like, you know, when you go to bed at night and you're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm so tired. You have to physically, mentally, emotionally relax to fall asleep. And so it's, it feels like that. And then sometimes in meditation, you fall asleep and that's what your body needed then. That's okay mm -hmm. too. So I would say those are really, you know, guided meditations help. Mm -hmm. Just listen and follow, listen and follow. And it, right now you are exactly perfectly being led by every little moment that's happening in your life. You are the awakening. That's how important you are for the rest of us. You are awakening at this moment. Even hearing this, every little sound, 
every little pause, every little moment is your awakening for all of us. Wow, that is mind blowing to think about. (laughs) And just to, for people that are, again, getting started with this and thinking about meditation, you know, there's, there's science behind it, right? And there's so many health benefits from meditating. And so can you talk just a little bit about that, that even if this is a little bit over your head, these could be a few reasons and and effects that this meditation has on your body? Yeah, this has all been proven scientifically too. They've done brain scans on people at introductory parts of meditation and when they get deeper. And that's why that nothing is impossible in a meditative state. Nothing. That's how people heal sporadically. That's how things happen unexpectedly. That's how you can bring something into your life in a moment that normal people in this world would say, oh, that would take years to accomplish that. And so scientifically, they've proven it lowers your blood pressure. It changes your brain chemistry. It changes your hormones. Mm -hmm. It balances all of your endocrine system from top to bottom. And it's like now, especially for anybody in the scientific community that that leans into the spirituality, they just know it. It's like, okay, there's been enough proof now. There's been brain scans. There's been, you know, EMF fields where they, they measure the energy field around your body before meditation and after. It's all there. It's scientifically proven. And so there's really, I mean, you can argue with it, but it's still science. It's like gravity. You can argue with it, <laughs> but if you lift your feet off the ground, you're still going to fall, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. It's so true. People always want proof, but I like to think sometimes at that just getting started level of why this is good for you, why this is important, why yeah. it's, you know, we talk about tuning in a lot. And a lot of times we hear like, what do you mean by that? Like, what are you saying? Because it's just, it is just, it's over some people's heads to yeah. get, to get yourself quiet. You know, when kids are running around in your job and you don't wake up before your family, because the second that you wake up, then it's just noisy, mm-hmm. you know? And so to find this quiet space, it's, we've said it almost on every episode <laughs> that yeah. the only way to know and to tune into that guide or God or universe, ho- however you would like to say it, it it's got to be quiet. You've got to quiet the noise to even hear, you know, what you are being guided to. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And that's why I love, and I know you guys talk about this a lot, but movement and exercise, that's why I love it so much. And it reminds me of like, you know, animals when they get in a scuffle and then they, you know, like ducks, then they'll swim off and then flap their wings like crazy, like to shake off that energy. And then they go down through the water and don't think anything of their scuffle where we, you know, like, oh, I can't believe he did that. She said that. Why did she say that? (laughs) And so movement, I always feel like if you have a really hard time meditating, move, go for a walk Mm -hmm. then sit back down, you know, work out, then meditate, do some form of physical movement. And it's scientifically proven too. It literally shakes up your nervous system. It literally is like a psychosomatic response to just tell your body like, okay, we shook off some of that ego. Now let's sit down and just what else is there? So that's a perfect way to lean into it if it's a really big struggle. And how crazy is it just to think that we can't just sit still, yeah. right? Like when I first started meditating, I'm like, this is so hard. But, and then you get those thoughts of like, why can't I do this? That's self-doubt, that self-worth. Like why I'm not worthy of this. I can't even do this. But then it's just, it's silly. Like if we, you can't just sit down and be with your thoughts, like that just shows you that you've got some deep work <laughs> to do. That's what it showed me. And also- I would encourage everyone who does start to meditate, right? Whether it's to find those mindful moments and to start there, like taking a walk, even just I'll talk to my clients about being present, doing the dishes and just doing the dishes, just focusing on that to kind of ease your way into meditation. But also when you are meditating, you know, starting with five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever it may be for you to really tune into how you feel after, yeah. What is your body telling you after? For me, it was craving more. Like, oh my gosh, like, yes, my nervous system was in fight or flight for f- years. And it's like, this is how it should be. Yes. Like, I was meant to feel good. I was 
meant to feel slow. I can think better. I can, I just, I am like, I, I feel myself glowing by just being. Yeah. And it's, it sounds silly, but when you experience it, it's, it's a game change. It's a life changing. Yeah, absolutely. And realizing it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. You sit down and, you know, thinking, okay, I got to do it this way. There is no this way. I have no idea what's going to happen when I sit down to meditate. I might fall asleep. I might like drift off into something. I may experience some really weird thing. I don't know. But again, I'm just not judging myself or the experience or what it should be or what it shouldn't be. Because look at our programming for how many, who knows, thousands of years, millions of years of go, 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 do, do, Mm -hmm. do. So it's not your fault when you sit down and you're just like, this is hard. That's okay. This is hard. What would it feel like if I could do this? Yeah. Yeah. And that all you have to do is show up. Yeah. And by just showing up, this universe, the God, God, source, whatever is going to direct you into that next move to let them show you what you need. Just like love and self-worth is your birthright. You don't have to do anything. You just get to collect it and to feel it it's the same kind of for meditation is to just be and just show up yeah absolutely and everything of spirit feels too simple Mm -hmm. but that's how you know it's Mm -hmm. spirit it's simple ego is complex everything is like hard difficult struggling striving straining but yeah it's when you hit those like new levels of self-discovery and all of it it's just like dorothy you know Mm -hmm. and those darn slippers you mean i had it in me all along Yes, yeah, you do, and you have. It's right there. I love it. You're like Glenda, the good witch of the (laughs) North. It's my favorite movie of all time. (laughs) So you have this free meditation, which we'll link in our show notes. That's amazing. You also have retreats that are incredible, and I would love for you to kind of dive into how that got started and what people can expect from them. Oh, yeah. See, I, excuse me, I've been on so many retreats myself. And I could feel like in the last, geez, couple years, each one I went on, I'm like, I can, I, I want to do this here. I want to do this part there. You know, even yeah. you, in the field of coaching, then you, you know, when you're stepping into that, you're like, mm-hmm. oh, I would say this here. I would, I would help them with that here or there. And so I just, I knew it was coming again. If you pay attention, you just see yeah. what, what feels like is the next logical step for you. So this in meditation or this retreat in Sedona, it's called Journey to Your Soul. And it's the very first retreat I've ever done, really, mm-hmm. that is on this level, you know, traveling somewhere. I'm so honored. I think about the women who have already signed up and I think, oh, that they want to come spend four days with me. But here was the point when I created that retreat. I thought, you know, in the day-to-day world, in the go, 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 in the doing all the things you have to do with kids, groceries, carpool, home, all of it, taking care of everything. No wonder it's hard to slow down. No wonder it's hard to stop. We don't give ourselves permission. The world doesn't give us permission to stop when we're in the day-to-day. And so I thought, I want to create an opportunity where women can come, take the superwoman cape off, and just be, and just experience something new, time away, They have their own inner teacher within them. I will guide in the way that I feel will help bring them back home to that soul. Each day there will be a meaning and a purpose. And it's like, I love that we can introduce that meaning and that purpose in the day and then show them how the day will teach them Mm -hmm. what that is for them. So we'll have, we'll actually have a resident chef. I have this amazing woman called the sister chef coming with I have like this team and it just gives me goosebumps thinking about it. I have a retreat coordinator coming. Um, She is an amazing girl and this is like, I've wanted to help her birth her business. So this is her first event. She will help run everything, do the guided hikes, which will be just self-discovery in themselves. I've been to Sedona twice this year. It's a magical place. The vortex energy is incredible. And then, you know, We'll also be able to, Nikki Lemon is our yoga instructor who will lead us in yoga. And she, as you all know, Mm -hmm. she's so beautiful and just bubbly and she just loves you the way you are and come as you are. Mm -hmm. And so being able to just take women out of their day to day and say, come here, let's regroup, let's reset, Mm -hmm. 
You don't need to be anything for anyone here. You can wear makeup or you don't have to wear makeup. Show up as you are. Let's move and breathe and have our being in this four days of self-discovery. And I'll meet you on the other side. And let's see what happens. Oh, I wish I was going <laughs> so bad. We'll have to put up a list of all of your retreats that you have. Because I feel like after this one, you're going to have a bunch in 2022. And we'll have to come on one. Yeah. I, I Paris is calling. Paris is oh. calling. Like that part of us that's like that feminine, oh. sexy part that we all need to just really own and bring out. And, oh, I just, I've seen that for since 2017. And then I have a really close friend from South Africa that I feel like there is a beautiful birthing discovery process mm. we can have in South Africa. Oh, I'm up for that one. That's yes. me. That's me. <laughs> go to that one. <laughs> and then Bali. For sure, Bali. I I've mean, been there all three. We'll just go to all of them. <laughs> oh, amazing. And your school of self-worth. That's yeah. something that's coming up that if people can't go on the retreats. Yes. Any information that you want to share? Any teasers on what people can expect with that or how they can sign up? Yes. So there's a lead-in process the week before. So October 18th through the 21st, we're going to do a free four-day challenge called Wake Up Your Self-Worth. Mm. Like, she's in there. She's in there. I promise you she's in there. Let's bring her out. Let's cultivate. Let's lean in. Let's listen to what she has to tell you because... She's been waiting her whole life for the moment that you tune in and let her show you. So we, again, think we need to do things, improve things in this outside world. And I want this Wake Up Your Self-Worth Challenge to be, let's do it a new way. Let me show you a, a, a roadmap that you can start to discover and lean into a new way of being in this world that's better than anything anyone here has possibly showed you before. Like I feel all of the things that I have learned from all of my past mentors and coaches and guides and all of the books I've read and the seminars I've been to, I just pull, like so many people do, I just pull what sings to mm -hmm. me, what seems true, and I just drop it into this. And it's going to be a way to show you what that really feels like and that you don't have to do anything. Thank God, you know, right? I'm tired of doing, doing, mm -hmm. doing, doing. You get to show up and be and we'll peel back the layers and we'll witness each other doing it together. And then that will lead into the next week, the School of Self-Worth. Well, we'll just take it deeper. And it's going to be beautiful. Sounds beautiful already mm -hmm. and hasn't even yeah. started. How can people sign up for the first free week? Yeah, so there's a link that I think you will mm -hmm. be able to share. Um, and it's just the free sign up to the four-day Wake Up Your Self-Worth Challenge. And it will be held... At a, the same time, it's 1 p.m. every day, except the last day will be at 11 a.m. And it's pre -re it'll be recorded. It'll happen in a private Facebook group. And so if you can't make it for the live, you can just watch the recording and follow along and take the journey with us. Oh, that's awesome. What a great option, too, for different schedules and, mm -hmm. and people that can't be in person. Yeah. And I'm thinking of your Miracle Mondays. And if people want to tune in to that and just all the other amazing things that you post regularly, where can they find you? What are those social handles that we can give people? Yeah, Dr. Brenda Coaching. So with Facebook and Instagram, it's Dr. Brenda Coaching. I'm going to start doing my Miracle Mondays a little different. They're going to be held in a Zoom room so people can sort of log in and either catch it live or find the recording in there. I want that to be a little bit of a sacred space for people to show up as they are and to be able to experience. We all need a, a miracle in our lives, you know, and especially on Mondays, right? So <laughs> it's a, a space to be able to call that miracle in. Amen. And a miracle it is. I've watched them and I look forward to them and I'm excited. The Zooms. I'm excited for everybody to experience your energy. Oh, yes. Because one of the benefits of what Brooke and I do are to expose people to the light that we find. And we're like, we want to be a light. And now we're shining light on people like you that have just, you're such a gift. And we're just so grateful that you're here and that everybody gets to experience you. I could just cry because especially women, we need you. We need to hear this message that you feel so compelled to share. And so I'm just so grateful that you're here and so happy to share everything that you're doing with the world. Thank you so much. And I'm equally grateful you know, this doesn't happen. The awakening doesn't happen alone. It's all of us together. So 
you play a huge role for the rest of us. So it isn't I, it's always we. And so that's what I know for sure. Otherwise, it feels like pressure if you think somehow it's like you're this doing this thing or you're this way or you're, no, it's like we're all, this is all of us. And I know that to be true with all of my heart. And so it's just an outer reflection of what you have internally inside you that you're witnessing. Can you just come along with us and tell us all of your gold <laughs> every single day of our lives, please? <laughs> Yeah, before we jump into the three gold stars, we have to talk about your podcast that you do with your husband called the Modern Spiritual Power Couple Podcast, which is amazing. I actually listen to it with my husband, and oh, yeah. what I love about it is the perspective, right? Like you're talking about what women need, and he's talking about what men need, or you know, you'll say something that I think is mind blowing, and then he'll say something like, "But men might not." even understand what you're saying. And totally. so it was so nice to have my husband with me because he was like, I total, yep, what he said. Like, I don't need to sit around and talk about my feelings. I'm never going to call a meeting to talk about feelings. So <laughs> yeah. I just want to thank you for it because it's such a great podcast. And can you tell our listeners about, you know, what got that started and what it's all about? Yes. It's the story of like Dennis and I sitting around talking, you know, after all the kids are to bed and we're just talking about, me, my struggles, him, his struggles together. You know, why aren't we communicating as much? What's happened? What happened here? And then knowing that our rock bottom of all of the lies, cheating and addictions and everything that we had been through and having conversations about that and openly sharing like the times when Dennis said, okay, we need to tell all of our past, everybody we've been intimate with what's happened where, when, because we need to start over and what our bottoming out look like. And so, you know, we're new, we're only five episodes in. It's been, it feels to me like it's been very teaching, but our episodes from here on out, like it's going to get nitty gritty of what we've been through because I realize that's the reflection that people need. Mm -hmm. They need to see that we're not like teaching from some point of view of just like this all sounds good. It's because we've been in the battle of our lives together. And again, it's a miracle we ever made it through that, ever, ever, ever. And I believe that there's a divine purpose behind it. But again, I feel like another whole new level of a relationship can be born when you're willing to step into something greater than yourself. Mm -hmm. And modern spiritual power couple has nothing to do with ego. Leave your ego at the door. We don't want to deal with that anymore. We don't, it has nothing to do with that sort of power. It's modern, meaning a new way of looking at things, spiritual meaning coming from within, power meaning you as the individual need to show up for the relationship. No more you complete me. It's I complete myself, and now I'll show up whole to this relationship. And couple, meaning we can do this together. You know, at my worst days, my best days, my hardest, my greatest, my fall flat on my face, my laugh my ass off and still be able to get through this days, we can do it together. I love that. It's going to be so powerful to hear what you've been through, like you said. And uh, we resonate with that because we felt like that was what was missing in our, the health and wellness spaces. Mm -hmm. All these people have it all, all the answers. And we're like, let's talk about how hard this can be. Because yeah. like, I don't have that. And everything everybody wants to hear is a real raw story of like something you got through and how you got through it and what you said to yourself or how you got through it as a couple is going to be a game changer. I cannot yeah. wait to hear and tune in with my husband. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, Ian, I'm making you tune in. <laughs> uh, this has been amazing. And I am so excited for the world to experience your magic, your miracles, your miracle to us. And we are so grateful for you. So thank you for being here. And we leave our listeners with three gold stars. So now it's time for your three gold stars. Number one, meditate, meditate meditate, try, even if for one minute, let go of everything you think you need to be and show up exactly as you are. Number two, expect miracles. You are the miracle you've been looking for this whole time. You are it. Wake up every day expecting even more miracles. And the third one would be move, 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 move. 
whether that's dance in the morning with your kids when you're getting ready for school, or whether that's, I can't get this meditation, so I'm going to go for a quick walk, and then I'll try it. Movement is like breathing, is shifting energy out of that negative state, and we deserve to get out of negativity. Yes. Beautiful. We deserve to feel good. Yes. Our birthright. Absolutely. All right. Unleashing Ivy. This is our rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. When you're out of alignment, what's one thing that gets you into a place of harmony? A Course in Miracles. Mm. And for anyone who doesn't know what A Course in Miracles is, because we've referenced it a bunch, can you just kind of quick explain what that is? Yes. It's a ma- an amazing spiritual text. It's about this thick. It was <laughs> dictated to a woman several years ago who d- doesn't believe in God or anything. And it came through her, and she decided over a seven to nine year span, write everything down with the help of a partner and put it in this book. And it's written in iambic pentameter, which is like Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. And it just is like sentence after sentence, a reawakening to truth. And it's deep, but oh my gosh, I say it should be in everyone's home. And it's like the new modern spirituality, the way that we could use it today. Mm. I keep hearing it and seeing it and (laughs) it's calling you. It's calling me. Yes. All right. I've got a mama question. As a mom of five, how do you not let your children's struggles or behavior affect your self-worth? So what I do is I'm really, really, really honest with them. And I tell them my truth, not what I think they should hear, not what I think I want them to hear. I'm just vulnerable with them. And kids seek out the truth like heat-seeking missiles. And so when they feel me say something really raw and vulnerable to them, like where I'm struggling when they do something or when I did something like that before, this is how I felt, it immediately brings them back to their truth too. That's powerful. It's important too because like you said, they can sense it. And my son said to me a couple weeks ago, when he was struggling, isn't there anything that you struggle with? And it was, he was straight up asking for it. Like, you know, what is it that you can tell me because I'm struggling here and I want to hear it from my mom. You know, they, they want to hear that you're human and that you make Uh mistakes too. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I love it. All right. Last question. What's one thing you wish you would have known sooner? That I'm worthy. I'm good enough. And that's more than enough. Thank you again for being here. We're so grateful. Thank you. you. And as always, we leave our listeners with a piece of gold. So would you like to share your gold with us? Yes. So this is a quote that came through me today that is not mine, but came through me. And it's this, self-worth. It's not something that you earn. It's something that you reclaim. Go get it and be responsible for that. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your gold.